Time now to look at the day's business news and we're starting with the markets rattled today by some disappointing economic data out of China. For more on that, I'm joined in the studio by Brian Quinn. Hi, Brian. Hello, Haxi. You're right. Uh, the, uh, those latest figures from China's uh, Bureau of National Statistics show growth for November in industrial production and retail sales considerably lower than expected, both missing forecasts by at least half a percent. The Asian index is losing a lot of ground Friday on those numbers. We see Tokyo's Nikkei closing off over 2 percent, Shanghai Composite off a percent and a half, Hong Kong's Hang Seng about one and two thirds. So uh, the Caspian sold down around one and a quarter percent. Now, European indexes opening mixed on Friday. London's FTSE 100 down around eight tenths of a percent. That after Theresa May's bid to revive her Brexit deal fell flat in Brussels last night. Uh, the uh, luxury goods giant here in France, LVMH, has reached a $3.2 billion deal to buy the Belmont Hotel Group. That's got the Paris Cat Caronte uh, helping it up there around nine tenths of a percent. Frankfurt DAX is up just over the flat line at the open. Well, uh, next, Friday marks the final day of the COP24 climate conference in Katowice, Poland. This year's event marked by some setbacks as the US, Russia and Saudi Arabia declined to endorse a recent report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that shows the world on track for catastrophic global warming without drastic emissions reductions within just the next two decades. Now, there has been progress, however, including in the realm of climate finance. May Bouvet is executive director of environmental NGO 350.org. She joins us live from the COP24 to talk about that. May, thanks so much for being with us. Now, one of the ways that campaigners are trying to push for action on climate change is through divestment, that is dumping their shares in major polluters. What have we seen on that front at this year's COP? Yesterday, we marked a major milestone in the global fight to divest from fossil fuels with the 1,000th institution committing to divest. That was actually the Casse de Depot in France. Investors representing over 7 trillion euro with assets under management have made some kind of commitment. So we are seeing the markets move when it comes to the role of fossil fuel investments. While negotiators here can't quite agree about how they need to do more about climate change outside these negotiations, people are doing quite a lot. Uh, and indeed, uh, not the only financial moves that we saw at this COP. We saw an investor group on Monday uh, warning of a severe financial crash uh, worse than 2008 if climate change isn't tackled. Uh, do you think the global economy is missing out on a big opportunity to go harder on clean energy? Well, without a doubt, clean energy is one of the rising sectors in the economy, and we're seeing the cost of a solar panel drops so low that in a lot of places, solar is actually cheaper than coal. So this transition is happening. It's lifting people out of poverty. It's creating jobs. And we are unfortunately not seeing political leaders willing to take the same risks. But there are a lot of moves that are being happening outside of these negotiating halls. And again, people power is helping make these pushes possible. Indeed. Well, uh, speaking of people power here in France, uh, in fact, around the world, carbon taxes have long been pushed as a method to, to fight climate change. Here in France, uh, we've seen this yellow vest movement, uh, which is essentially a, a popular movement to push back against taxes uh, levied on those who can, it would seem, least afford them. Have there been moves at this COP to, to try to ensure a, a just transition? That's been a major theme here. Of course, this COP is taking place in coal country, and it's very crucial that unions are here at the table. We're paying very close attention to what's happening in France, and we know the situation is still volatile. But the fact that economic policy, social policy, are actually very tied to climate policy is something we're paying close attention to. And look, Climate justice is tax justice, and it's no surprise that people feeling that they're paying the most when elites, the oil industry, are not being asked to pay their fair share. Now, we do know that some segments of what ha is happening in France are actually marginalizing some communities and scapegoating migrants. That's not acceptable. A broad social movement has to welcome everyone. But we do see that this is a great chance for learning about how these experiences of what climate policy really is impacts real people. This is not not theoretical. It is a daily struggle for a lot of people around the world. Indeed. Well, that is all the time we have for right now. I want to thank May Bouvet of 350.org very much for being with us. That's it for the business update, Haxi. I, in turn, will thank you, Brian Quinn, for that business update. And it